Hey guys, so this is going to be super confusing, but as you know, I uploaded the DYF Exposed Part 2 video a couple days ago, but I'm just not happy with it, and I really don't want to have videos up on my channel that I'm not proud of. You guys deserve more than that, so I decided that I'm going to re-edit Part 2 and include additional information, so yes, about 30% of this video will be content from the previous version of Part 2, and 70% will be new information. If you're new to the Dress Your Face series, I have partnered with Undress Your Face, which if you don't know is an Instagram slash blog page created by customers and followers of Dress Your Face who have been on the receiving end of her poor business ethics, misdeeds, and unprofessional behavior. I included more about their page and their mission statement in part one, so if you haven't seen it, I suggest you watch that video prior to this one as this is obviously a continuation of part one. And of course, I'll leave the link to that video and where you can find Undress Your Face in the description box below. So now that all of that is out of the way, let's jump right into part two, take two. So last time I said it was just the tip of the dick, but this time we are going full shaft ahead. So we left off talking about Tamana's first failed attempt at a London masterclass, which was scheduled for May 31st, 2015. If you recall, according to Tamana, when making her way to London for the masterclass, she was allegedly detained at Heathrow Airport for five hours, fingerprinted, photographed, videotaped, and interrogated by immigration officers. She claimed the reason for her detention was because she was no longer in the business category, but was now considered an American celebrity in the entertainment industry, which would be the same as singing artists and performers simply due to the size of the event she was holding. That event being the masterclass. She also claimed that she was originally informed that there was what's called a training clause, which meant that she would not need a working class visa to enter if it's a training session and was less than a day long. Tamana believed that she had now been categorized as a performing artist, which carried much stricter laws, and she had to shut down the class and vacate the country immediately. But if you recall, in contrast to this statement regarding being categorized as a performing artist, her story changed following both failed attempts into the UK for the first and rescheduled masterclass when she replied to a comment from one of her followers on Instagram stating the following, When I first came, I was flagged as border control didn't categorize me as a trainer, instead they categorized me as a business visitor and I needed a work permit or business visa all of a sudden. In this version of events, there was no mention of the fact that she was an American celebrity or considered a performer artist. And just so you're aware, I'm not saying that I don't believe this happened, however, I do believe she exaggerated and the fact that her story changed is questionable. But when she was denied entry into the UK for the second time for the July 24th, 2015 rescheduled masterclass, I started to wonder whether this was in fact a coincidence. This time she claimed that five weeks prior to the event, her immigration lawyer and this is just a side note, but in another explanation she gave, she said she hired three lawyers, two in the US and one in the UK. But but as for this version of events, she said her immigration lawyer had promised her that they would get her visa sorted out within two weeks, but later refused to return her calls and emails after taking her money. In fact, she specifically stated that she felt scammed by her own lawyer and claimed that she then had to file 80 plus pages of supporting documentation and apply for a priority visa, which she was to collect the day before the event from the British Embassy in New York City. She stated that she flew to New York City to pick up the visa, but then accused the British Embassy of delaying her her visa last minute specifically for her to miss the event and was therefore stranded in New York City and never went to shy away from the woe is me card. In this Instagram post she added that this was one more disappointment, one more letdown and that God clearly did not in capitals want her to go to London. She went on to say that anyone else would have called the whole thing off and moved on but she could not do that. Nope, not Tamano Roshan, queen of shady business practices and a long-standing history of cunty behavior. She would never do such a thing. She also stated that she wasn't going to let another event slip by her students who came from all over the country and beyond to get DYF certified. Let's chat for a second about how getting DYF certified means fuck all because she has yet to prove that she is actually qualified to teach, which would require additional certification. Just because you are licensed to practice makeup artistry in the state of California does not mean that you are qualified or licensed to teach. Makeup by Lilith, who is a well-known LA makeup artist, owns a makeup studio slash academy as well as her own makeup line and also offers courses and monthly online subscription makeup classes shed some light on the difference between seminar certifications and school certifications. So I just want to explain to you guys how certifications work. When you are getting certified at a seminar that is not going to be the same that is not going to be the same thing as being certified at a school for a course. 
that's going to be at a school. You can't take a course with an individual um, because their certification doesn't really mean. So your course is certified by your school who's certified by the state. That's how that works. And it tells brands that you've been trained day after day, hours after hours, how to be a professional makeup artist. When you are certified at a seminar, that's basically just your resume. So you're not going to get your discounts and all that good stuff that pro artists get. The difference between Tam Tam and Lilit is that Lilit is well respected and transparent about the fact that becoming certified at a seminar is not the same as being certified at school and that you can't take a course with an individual and become certified with the state. That is done through a school who is certified by the state and she does not mislead her students into thinking that they will become certified makeup artists by the state by taking her seminars. She also clearly states that seminars such as the ones she and Tam Tam provide are for your resume and that taking one does not allow you the same privileges as a certified makeup artist. There's more to makeup artistry than just applying makeup on someone's face such as using proper hygiene which Tamana lacks herself and we will get into that in another video because she is notorious for unsanitary makeup application practices. Showing these, this is not dirt, you little shit talkers, you little shit talkers. This is cracked gel, so you can see the, so those little, ugh, those nails. Maybe she learned from her quack Beverly Hills dermatologist who does her lip injections and Botox for free in exchange for promotion to her large Instagram following. Apparently, he believes that sanitary practices are optional as sometimes he wears gloves when performing procedures and sometimes he does not. Depends on the day, I guess. If you haven't seen my video on him, you should check it out and I'll leave the link below because Miss Tam Tam thinks nothing of promoting a dermatologist who used to represent himself as a cosmetic surgeon until his medical license was revoked by the medical board for repeated negligent acts, one of which was aiding and abetting a registered nurse in performing facelift surgery when he wasn't even a plastic surgeon, nor was he board certified. I guess the possibility of putting her followers' health at risk on her recommendation of this quack didn't cross her mind as long as she got her injections for free. In this clip, Princess Tam Tam goes on about Dr. Quack, and I guess people started calling her out on it, and she took to Snapchat to say, don't even tell me if you got free injections, you wouldn't take it. LMA and even if I had to pay full price, I would still. No, Tam, I can honestly say that if I was offered free injections from a quack, I would not take it as I value my health. Doctor, who I really want to bring on the show one day so you guys can like interview him, um, here in Beverly Hills, and he does, his name is uh, Simon Orient, and he does uh, treatments for under eye dark circles. And if you go down on my page, you'll see my eye before and after. Um, you know, it didn't remove it 100%, but my God, did it make such a great difference. But here's something else that's interesting. She who gets lip injections also promotes those dangerous lip suction devices that claim to plump your lips. So it's kind of like influencers or celebrities who promote teeth whitening products, but have veneers. You know, like Kim Zolciak. Now, to be fair, the pics of her advertising the lip sucking device were prior to her posting the promo for lip injections. But who's to say that this was her first time doing lip injections in the first place? Maybe this was just her first time promoting them on Instagram, and maybe she used the results from her lip injections to show how well the lip sucking device worked. My point is that either way, her credibility is shit and both of these promotions were very irresponsible of her being that both carry health related risks. Anyway, back to Tam's London Masterclass Fables. So as she said, she was stranded in New York City but stated that the show must go on so she flew out her Dress Your Face live team out to New York City from LA so that she could arrange to live stream the class to the attendees in London because nothing could stop her from teaching the class that would ultimately be her students only chance to finally get DYF certified this year. This woman has a serious complex again trying to pass off her meaningless prefab staple certificates of attendance as something other than just a piece of paper. As I said, Tamana uses getting DYF certified as a selling point when selling tickets to her masterclass, but you are actually better off going to Staples and buying a pre-made certificate and adding her name to it as her certificate is just as good as mine certifying you as here for the T certified because you watch my channel. Fucking useless. As you can see in these pictures, the certificate is very generic and really only a certification of attendance, but that's not what she tries to pass it off as. And you can see 
how her misrepresentation of the type of certification can be misinterpreted by her students in this picture, where one of her students excitedly posted on Instagram that they were a DYF certified makeup artist. But anyway, she decided to fly her crew out to New York City to live stream the class from there, but for some reason she decided against informing her students of the fact that she would not be appearing live in advance. Even the ones who were flying in from other countries such as India when she knew two days ahead of the event that she wasn't going to be there. In fact, she only broke the news to the attendees once they were at the venue sitting and waiting for her. She appeared on the projector as you will see in this next clip and informed them that she would not be coming. I'm on now. Um, first of all, I want to thank all of you for coming from everywhere to attend this class that, um, that I've been planning for so long. I, um, I have a really, really bad news. Um, there's a delay, obviously, I'm stranded. Um, there's a delay, so whatever I'm saying, it's going to take a minute for you guys to get it. So you might see me kind of dead with no words for a little bit. Um, I, I, I don't even know how to say this. I've been going through a lot the uh, past month and a half uh, since the last time I've come to London. Um, as many of you know, I'm sure all of you know, the horrific experience I had last time I was in London. Um, I was told I had done my research and everything, spoken with Now, I am here in New York, waiting, waiting for the past two days straight. No sleep for a month, no food. It was Ramadan, and when Ramadan ended, that's when I kind of got the news of what's going on. And of course, I haven't eaten, I haven't slept, been crying nonstop for the past God knows how many days. And I'm here in New York thinking, okay, as soon as they give me the clearance to get my visa, to get back my passport, I'm going to hop on that next flight, I'm going to come to London, and I'm going to show you guys the best freaking show that you guys have ever seen. And now, I'm here to tell you that God had different plans, and I'm still in New York. I have not heard a damn thing from the British consulate. They're not giving me any information. We've been calling every single day, several times a day. They will not let me in the building. I'm not allowed in their freaking building. I have to sit here and wait until I can get clearance to come to London. And I don't even have words to explain to you guys how deeply sorry I am that a lot of you had to come from far you guys have come from all over Europe. Some of you have come from India, from Pakistan. You guys have gotten your visas and you're here and here I am stuck in New York. Thank God I'm at my friend's house who lives here. And she has fast internet so at least I can give you this message virtually in person. So I can tell you that unfortunately I can't give you guys my hugs. I can't take pictures with you guys today. And I can't be there for you guys today in, in person, but I am going to deliver the best effing class I can ever deliver via webcam. I have my model here, who is the same friend that lives here and is giving me her room and giving me her internet and everything. I flew over my Dress Your Face Live team here, Zeno. As a result of the fact that she was a no-show at her second attempt at a masterclass, she offered the attendees a choice. Either they could leave the masterclass with the goodie bag as her gift to them and receive a full refund, or they could stay and be refunded half the money. The class went ahead via webcam, however, several attendees took to Instagram to express their frustration and disappointment, but found out that any negative comments were quickly deleted by Team DYF. One follower asked Tam Tam if she was going to be refunding the travel expenses of her attendees after not having informed them of her non-attendance in advance, and she responded by deleting leading that comment. This person wrote about how they attended the class but were let down in terms of communication from DYF and her team, and this person who also attended the class said she chose to leave because she wanted to see and learn from DYF in person. She flew in from India specifically for this class and was really disappointed that DYF did not make it. She also claims that the girls who stayed back got DYF certified and she did not because she left and found that to be unfair. On top of all that, she says that she wishes they were given the right information 
information by her team. The same commenter left a separate comment again expressing her frustration over the matter. And obviously these are just a few of the comments, but this one was particularly interesting. This person questions how people who stayed for the class can say they're certified if the certification was not achieved in the proper way. They go on to say that DYF did not see their work after they applied it on themselves, and in fact, they just watched DYF on the screen just as you would on any YouTube channel, which would make the certificate pointless, which is true. She also added in that she thought emailing and advising her students the night before that she would not be attending live would have been a better alternative than how she handled the situation. But in the contradiction of the century, Tam Tam leaves this comment on Instagram. She says, the only way for me to be able to properly certify is in person so I can check the work. So currently, DYF Academy it is. Decided not to go through with the online plan because I couldn't find a good way to check the work of all students properly. To which someone responded to her, if your only way to properly certify someone is to check their work in person, why did you have all those master classes and give away those DYF certificates? Good question. So there it is, straight from Tam herself. Her certificates mean nothing. But back to the class. After much pressure on social media, Tam gave in and fully refunded the students who decided to stay for the whole duration of the masterclass, as she should have done in the first place. I mean, if they wanted a live stream, they could have just tuned in for her $19 a month online tutorials because she does offer that as well. And by the way, we're going to get into her Dress Your Face live classes in an upcoming video because like everything else she touches, they too are riddled with bullshit. But anyway, Tam chose to portray the masterclass as a huge success and tried to make sure that everybody was under the impression that she had turned things around despite going through such an awful ordeal. However, she also took criticism extremely poorly and took to Snapchat and Instagram to threaten a blogger named S. Says It, I believe, who attended the London Masterclass and blogged about her experience. Okay guys, so I'm going to show you Tam Tam's snaps where she went on a cunt rant about this blogger and please excuse the snoring in the background. These are old snaps taken from the internet and the snores do not belong to me or undress your face so please bear with me. That's a first. So you're saying that my live stream that day when I was teaching the class via webcam wasn't live because I was wearing the same dress I wore previously over a year ago in LA. So that means that my model actually came to LA and I recorded it there. pre -record. Because I'm not allowed to wear the same dress twice. No words, no words, that's beyond stupid. The person who's writing all this stuff, I mean, I know you're watching because you record all my snaps. I mean, <laughs> I mean, are you okay? Like, really, are you all right? I don't think you're okay. Look, I know we're all fighting our own battles here, and we all have, like, issues that we deal with on a daily basis. But to devote that much time to scroll down someone's page past two years of posts, that's like two to three thousand posts, to find a dress that they wore twice just to try to make a point, which doesn't even make sense. You have got to get a hold of yourself, honey. I mean, shit. Don't you have parents? Don't you have kids? Don't you have a family? Anyway, next lie. That I kept everyone's money from London and never refunded anyone. I am so sorry to just keep busting your bubble with every point. I mean, I have proof of everyone's refund. While I was still in New York, before I even came home to deal with it, I already did as many refunds as I could before Eventbrite kicked me out. Then, I had Eventbrite pass the approval to go ahead and refund everyone else. And it took about five to seven business days to get that second part of the refund completely through. So some of you may have waited longer because it is international and because your banks might have kept the funds before releasing them. So, just so you know, everything was done when I said it was done. And I was... Also, emailing each and every one of you every single step of the way with proof from my email conversations with the Eventbrite team to make sure that you guys knew that the refunds were happening. By the way, I actually... 
actually refunded every single person who came, even the ones that got their certificate. That whole class was on me. It was my pleasure to do so. And if some of you are new followers and just kind of like, what the hell is she talking about? Scroll down my page. I back to the refund thing. I had told everyone in class that came, 300, more than 300 people were there. And I said, join the class, which I was live streaming anyway. So they still got the class. They still got the goodie bags and everything. Like that. They still got the certificates. And then, because most of us ended up staying and totally trusting in the experience and allowing that experience to be such an amazing one for them, because they made me so proud to be their teacher and so happy to have their support, I went ahead and surprised everyone at the end with refunds for all. So everyone got a free class out of this completely and took home so many gifts and prizes. So some of those gifts and prizes were still with me and I was stranded in the U.S., so some of those things couldn't get delivered all the way, but most of the items were already in London. So, just so you know, you, whatever you are that likes to talk shit, I know who you are. I know exactly. You are a girl who did not stay for the whole class and were upset that you left, got your refund by the way, but didn't get the free class. And now you're punishing those who did stay and those who did earn their certificate and did enjoy the class for getting their refunds as well because you because you made the wrong decision. That's on you. That's not on them. I followed through with all of my promises to you guys that day. Every promise was followed through. And just because I decided to reward the true supporters that I had, that doesn't mean you have the right to rip them apart too just for supporting me and telling them how much they really love this class. I know that makes you burn inside when people are like, oh my god, that London class was still the most amazing class I've ever been to, even though I wasn't there. Because I was there. Um, and I FaceTime with all my winners. So every time we had a raffle winner, I wanted to FaceTime with them as well as being on the big screen. But I wanted to hear their feedback too. So, so don't make them feel bad for the fact that you missed out on such a special day. If you would have stayed, you would have had a very different opinion very different opinion. Here's where those hate, paid whatever the hell it is, cross the line though. This is what my niece tells me because you're starting to attack my family now. Does it really make you feel happy and accomplished to argue with a 12 year old? My niece showed me all this and I had no idea that she even knew about all this slander stuff that's, that you're spreading. But she started, you know, obviously as my niece, she felt the need to defend me. Guys, like, this chick was straight up arguing with my niece back and forth, like, like a little kid. So it makes me think, like, is this person really that big gone? I mean, really. Don't mess with my family, because I know exactly who you are, what your email is, and where you live. One of you is in France, the other is in London. Don't try to lie either. We all know this. And your whole page is filled with lies. So if you try to deny that, that's just another lie anyway. And you guys know that I have my resources. I know how to find shit out. I know. Don't worry. Don't get all scared and shit. Like, oh my god, Josephine's going to do something to us. She's threatening us now. Calm down. It's all good. I'm not going to do anything. Karma's going to take care of you for me. But to be, like, completely honest with you, you're only making my name more relevant. That's all you're doing. So as much as you want to spread all this hate, all you're really doing is showing how obsessed you are and how much time you have on your hands because honestly no one else would do this shit it's okay we get it you're mad you're angry you're upset that's fine like girl chillax move on it's been so many months like, anyway enough of that time to talk to my babies my good girls which is pretty much 99.999% of my online population because you guys are my true supporters. And that 0.0000001% is just angry that, I mean, I don't really know why they're angry. My dad says they're angry because they can't get on my level. But, I mean, we're all given the same 24 hours in a day. So instead of spending your time hating and bashing and creating negative vibes, work. Work on yourself. Do something productive in your life, something that truly makes a difference in this world and can create more of that supportive atmosphere that we're missing on Instagram. 
for my lovely girls out there who are truly following me for the right reasons and with the goal to grow with me and to be a part of this amazing experience. If you do see any of the lies, the hate, the slander, the fake pages and things that are saying bad things about me or anyone else that you love online, make sure that you are reporting them for bullying and harassment as well as spam and fake pages, things like that. Because we want to make sure that Instagram remains as safe of a community as possible. And with people like that still being allowed to roam the streets of the internet world, it's never going to progress. So it's our responsibility to make sure that we weed out the bad ones so that the rest of us can have a healthier, happier experience online together. Yay! So I hope you enjoyed today's tantrum session, Tam's Tantrum Tuesday. Um, it was more like a real talk rather than a tantrum. Nonetheless, it was still a lot of fun, and I know it's your guys' favorite day of the week on my Snapchat, so I'm going to keep it coming. I will see you next time. Bye! So now we can see what kind of person we're dealing with here. She also went on to accuse attendees of looting and stealing the extra goodie bags as seen in this Instagram post, despite photographic evidence and first-hand attendee accounts showed to be sparse in quantity. And while we're talking about the goodie bags, according to Tam, she is known for having the best goodie bags and raffle prizes at her master classes. So here's a little expectations versus reality realness for you. Expectations, reality, expectations, Reality. Girl, ain't no one risking getting charged with theft for that pile of shit. Oh, and one last thing. As for the price of the masterclass, I'll just leave this here. Mario, who is an incredibly talented celebrity makeup artist, famously known for being Kim Kardashian's makeup artist, charges $519.99 for general admission to his masterclass, which includes a five-hour class, a meet and greet with Mario, as well as a picture with him, a certificate of completion, and of course his famous goodie bag filled with his favorite high-end products. If you follow him on Instagram, you know what I'm talking about. The value of the goodie bag is almost equivalent to the fee of the class. So I don't know where this woman gets off charging as if she's in the same league as Mario and keep in mind these were her prices two years ago so it's likely that if she held a master class today her fee would be much more than that. Sorry but DYF versus Mario no competition. Okay guys that is the end of this video. I hope I made up for the mess of the last video. I really appreciate your love and support and I'll be the first one to admit the fact that the previous video was shit so thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and also check out undress your face on Instagram I'll leave all the info in the description box below as usual Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys again soon in my next one. Bye